G'day, I'm Peter Morrison, one of the trek leaders here at Adventure Kokoda. I've been with the company since 2008. I'm a former state boxing champion and I'm a current development coach for the PNG National Boxing Team. I'm here to give you a guide into the level of commitment to training you should be making and some of the exercises you can do to help you prepare for your Kokoda journey. Some of the most common questions we get asked are, how fit do I need to be to do Kokoda? And what kind of things should I be doing to train? Well, you don't have to be doing army style route marches, but you do have to train. Our physical training guide is based on common sense and personal commitment. You should relate every step you take in training to a deposit in your physical bank account. If you've made enough deposits, you'll finish your trek in good shape. If you haven't, then you'll go into debt. And debt, in whatever form it comes, is always painful. Our Adventure Kokoda team are always available to talk to you and offer advice on your preparation. Once you commit to a trek, you're part of our team. And our goal is to make sure you finish your trek in good shape. We strongly recommend you complete a cardio check and physical assessment at your local gym or physio as early as possible. Alternatively, we have a basic fitness test on our website you can use to assess how much work you need to be physically prepared for Kokoda. Your physical fitness is your personal responsibility. You need to commit to an exercise program that will enable you to complete the trek. The trek is physically demanding and you will need to be physically fit. Please don't delude yourself. If you have not been training regularly or if you're a bit overweight, then get an honest assessment of your physical condition to undertake strenuous workouts. Don't underestimate the ruggedness of the Kokoda Trail or the physical demands it'll place on you. It's much like climbing up the stairs of a multi-storey building, only the stairs are slippery, muddy and uneven. Aerobic fitness can be gained initially by commencing a vigorous walking program. The minimum requirement is to start with walks of about 45 minutes duration. This should be increased by intervals of 10% per week as you get closer to your trek. For your trek, as you will be on the trail eight to nine hours each day, you will need to condition yourself as much as possible. Obviously, bushwalking up and down hills is a great way to condition yourself, but not everybody has access to terrain like this. If you live in a more urban environment, try and source a good set of stairs, a hill, or soft sand and utilise what is available to you. As you progress, it's a good idea to mix in some slow jogging or cycling as an alternative. Strength can be gained by specific exercises. Now, there are plenty of at-home workout apps available, so you could try one of those. But the best place to do it is in your local gymnasium, where they can plan a program to strengthen your leg and your body core muscles. However, there are exercises that can be done in your home or at the local beach or park that can get the job done as well. Step ups, lunges, first without weight, then building up, squats, calf raises, planks. These exercises can also be adapted and completed at home. Abdominal strength and endurance is important for core stability, balance and back support. Again, we have a test on our website that measures the strength and endurance of the abdominals and hip flexor muscles. Common sense dictates that we'd be realistic in our self-assessment of our current physical condition. What has been my exercise regime over the past year? Have I been eating a sensible diet, smoker or non-smoker? Alcohol consumption? Am I overweight? What is my resting heart rate? When did I last have a full medical checkup? If you're fed income about trekking Kokoda, particularly over the wartime route, then you must commit to a training program that suits your lifestyle. Use the following as a guide for your physical preparation. Gym versus outdoors. You can certainly do some of your training in the gym, especially strength building and aerobic development. But like any sports person, you need to be match fit. This means doing what we're going to be doing on the Kokoda Trail, and that is walk. Alternate gym work with outdoor training. Walking. The best way to keep track of your fitness progress is to map out a circuit of one or two kilometres. This makes it easy to keep track of time and distance covered and to add to your distance. Walk at a brisk pace to stretch yourself physically and get some aerobic benefit. If you can get out on a weekend and put in four to six hours trekking a hilly area, the steeper the better, it will pay big dividends. Again, don't walk on roads, take to the dirt tracks or the bush if you can. Increase the distance you have walked each week until you are walking at least 12 kilometers a day, preferably every day for the last month, but if not, as regularly as possible. It's also a good idea to train with a day pack with six to eight kilograms in it. If you're going to carry your own pack, make it about 20 kilograms. Make sure 
that for the last four to six weeks at least, you walk in the boots, socks, and trekking clothes you'll be wearing. This will iron out any problems before you get to Kokoda. Another good idea is to walk in them when they are wet, cross creeks, step in puddles, even just stand in a bucket before you walk. That way, you will understand how your feet react when they do get wet on Kokoda. Aerobic fitness. You will need to combine some aerobic fitness into your program. If running is not your bag, that's okay. Other alternatives include cycling, rowing exercise, boxing, or your gym can design an aerobic circuit training program for you that is also strength building. It's a good idea to alternate your training, walking one day and aerobic fitness the next. Acclimatization. It's going to be 28 to 30 degrees in PNG with very high humidity. To help cope with this, train in a sweater or track seat. You need to get hot while you're walking. There is a saying used in the army and when boxers are preparing themselves for competition. Train hard, fight easy. You need to adopt that maxim for your own preparation. Get hot and sweaty and push yourself physically. You'll be glad you did. And don't forget to carry your hydration bladder during training and sip often. It is the most effective way of preventing dehydration. Proper hydration is the most important factor in training and trekking. Use a three litre hydration bladder for your training and get into the habit of taking a good swig of water every 15 minutes. Do not wait until you're thirsty before you drink. By then, it's too late and you'll begin to dehydrate. If you use an electrolyte replacement, mix it in a separate water bottle. Be sure to mix it in accordance with the recommended dosage. Don't overdose on it or otherwise it will have the opposite effect. Acclimatisation is a problem. We're going from a temperate environment in Australia to a tropical environment in PNG. It takes a couple of days to adapt to the heat and the humidity of the jungle, but the fitter you are, the quicker you'll acclimatise. You can't cheat yourself on Kokoda. If you've done the work, you'll complete it okay, but if you haven't, you'll be a candidate for an emergency evacuation. So please ensure that you're prepared for what is a gruelling and physically demanding adventure. Our Adventure Kokoda Facebook page is updated regularly with training and information sessions, and our trek leaders are always on hand to offer you advice.